Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So today we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at the new backporting method that has been released by Best Pig. And this is the backport project or backpork project, I should say, which lets you sideload system libraries into the PS5 games. So the purpose of this project is to help people on older firmwares as low as 7.61 for now to be able to load newer PS5 games that would normally only run on higher firmwares like 9.x and 10.x, so games like Astrobot and Silent Hill 2 and many more. So the actual project comes in two parts. You have the payload, which actually replaces the system libraries that the game is trying to load uh, when you actually run the game. And the second part is the patches themselves, which are essentially system libraries that have been modified to remove any dependencies that require that higher firmware so it can actually get them loaded on lower firmwares. So those are the two parts here. Now, some games may require other tweaks beyond this to actually get them working. There's no guarantee this is going to fix every game, of course, and there may be more patches and more libraries that are needed for certain games. But this is the initial release. So with this version, we've got different patches for these system libraries right here. Now, the project does not actually provide the patched system libraries for you to use, and that's because the project would get taken down if they were included. So instead, you have these patch files, which can be applied to the system libraries that have been dumped from your own console. So pre-patched versions are circulating online, and I will cover the easy way installing the pre-patched versions, but I will also show you guys how you can apply the patches to your own files as well. As an example, let's say I'm on 7.61 firmware and I want to run a game like Astrobot, which normally requires a 9.x or 10.x firmware in order to run. So these patches are designed to patch the system libraries so that we can get 10.01 system libraries essentially working on 7.61 by stripping the dependencies that would cause it to crash normally on a 7.61 console. Okay, so starting with the easy method using the system libraries that have already been patched to run on the older firmware, which are these ones right here. So these are the SPRX files. So for a game like Astrobot, all we would really need to do is if I go onto my USB drive here, you can see I've got a homebrew folder and I've got the game dump in here, PPSA21564-app. So if I go into this game folder, what we want to do is create a fake lib folder in here. So we right click, we create a new folder called fake lib. Now, of course, if your game dump already has this fake lib folder with some system library files already inside it, that would suggest that it already has a backport already set up. So you just need to run the backport payload. And then when you load the game, it should initiate that backport and hopefully get the game running on your firmware. And then we essentially go into that folder and we open up our fake lib folder that contains our patched uh, system files here. And you essentially want to copy them in. Now, you really want to test this with one module. If it doesn't work, try another module, because if you replace all of them, that's likely to cause instability and other problems. And it does mention in the actual project itself here, best practices, it's recommended to sideload as few libraries as possible, as there's no guarantee that there won't be side effects. So most games seem to only need two AGC libraries, but some games like Minecraft require additional libraries. So I would essentially just copy over the AGC libraries, which is the uh, libseagc.prx and libseagdriver.prx. I would copy those two only into the fake lib folder, test with this, see if the game works. If it doesn't, if it requires additional ones, then you can copy, you know, maybe some of these other ones over as well and see if it works with those. But most games should work with just these two, but some games may require one of the other ones or more of the other ones as well. So that is the general idea there. So with that now done, we need to actually get the payload loaded as well. Now you can either just send this over the network before you go to load the game, or you can add it, of course, to your uh, YouTube jailbreak. If you're using the YouTube jailbreak autoloader, for instance, then you could just add it to your autoload.txt file. So we take the payload, which is available from uh, right here, from the releases section here, download the ps 5 backporkelf and then from there, you can just copy that into your autoloader folder. And essentially you want to rename, copy the elf file name here, open up the text file here, and then just add the payload in as the last payload that you want uh, the autoloader to load. You may also have to add a delay, like exclamation mark a thousand to add a second delay before launching the payload, uh, if the payload does not launch properly. But that's the general idea. So you add that in your payload 
directory and then you should be good to go. So that should be it really. We just plug this USB drive in. Okay, so I've got the USB drive connected and now we're just gonna run the YouTube jailbreak auto loader, which is what I use for this uh, system to try and get the jailbreak loaded. And of course we have the payload added as the last payload in the list. So it'll load everything else first, ETA hen, and then the shadow mount payload. And then finally it should load the back pork payload as well. And we can see it showing up there with a notification, welcome to back pork uh, 0.1 by best pig. So it has successfully been loaded there. Of course, you can load it separately through a payload injector if you prefer, but that is us got it loaded there. Now, I am on a 10.01 system, so I'm not sure, you know, if it will do anything really, because obviously this is meant to be loaded on an older firmware like 7.61 to get it working, but I don't have a console on 7.61, but we'll try it anyway. We'll load Astrobot and see what happens. So obviously this game would run on 10.01 anyway, but we can see we get patch successful, waiting for the game to exit. So it has successfully applied the patch and... It looks like it is working. So we kind of expect that anyway on 10.01, but it has supposedly replaced the system module. So if there was something wrong with the patch module, it would likely not load even on a 10.01 system. So obviously this is not a proper test because I'm on 10.01 and this game can run on this firmware anyway without a back port. But generally this is just a basic idea of how you actually get this set up. If you were trying to run this on an older firmware, a 7.61 or 8.x console that normally cannot run this game. That is the general idea on how you set this up. And when you go to close the game, you can see it comes up with another prompt saying the directory was removed successfully. So it mounts and unmounts the fake lib folder from the directory when you run and close the game. And that is working successfully with the payload. So that's how you can apply the pre-made patches if you're on an older firmware to try and get that game running on that firmware that normally requires a higher firmware to run. So now let's look at how we can apply the patches manually as I will not be able to share the pre-patched versions in the description. So if you have a console on a higher firmware like 10.01, you can dump the system libraries from your console and patch them so that they can be used to get games running on older firmwares. This will also be useful to know for when new patches are added to the project. So generally the idea is that you need to go to the code and download it as a zip file and then extract that zip file over somewhere on your computer. You need to decrypt the system modules from your console. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. One of the ways is to use FTP with the official FTP payload from the PS5 payload dev repo. You can download that or you can use the PS5 self decryptor by plugging a USB drive into the console and then running one of these payloads like the system common one or the full system one which will essentially decrypt and dump all of the libraries over to the USB drive I believe. I'm going to use the FTP payload so essentially, you just go ahead and copy the FTP payload into a payload injector, enter the PS5's IP and port number as 9021, and inject that payload, and that will run FTP on the console. Once it's running, you can then open up an FTP client, and we can simply connect to the console by entering the PS5's IP in the host box, and the port number is 2121. We can connect over to the console, and then head to the system directory, and then go into the common directory, and then the lib directory. And this is where you'll find most of the modules, at least the ones that we have the patches for right now. So in here, we can search for, you know, any of the libraries like the AGC and AGC driver.sprx and copy those out. And using this FTP payload will automatically decrypt them as we export them over to the computer. So these are our decrypted modules and we can go ahead and simply uh, create a patch folder and copy them inside. So just for quickness, I'll just do one of them here. We'll do this one here. So to apply the patches, we can use this ROM patcher JS file here. The idea is that you take the library file itself and you copy that in as the ROM file. And then you take the patch from the back pork project, which is right here. So we go to the patches and we take the patch for the same system module and we drag that in. And then we can simply apply the patch and that will apply the patch to the library. We can then copy that patch file back over here to this folder. So here we have the original and then we have our modified one and we can simply delete the original, rename the modified one back to the same name and that is our patched file right there. But it will not be executable on the console until we fake sign it, which we can do by using the make f self script. So I'll just drag this in here. I'll leave this stuff linked in the video description. And then we can simply, with Python version 3 installed, which is required for this, we can run the bat file here and that will detect the module and fake sign it for us. And that should create our fake signed version 
of that patched module or patched library, I should say, that you can then use to try and run a game on an older firmware. And you could do that with any one of the modules that there are patches available for and release those so that people on older firmwares can use them to try and get their games running. That's the general idea, especially if any new patches come out. But of course, all of the patches that are currently available, we already have the pre-patched libraries available for those that you can just apply if you're on an older firmware. But for any new ones that come out, you'll be able to patch them yourself in the future. And of course, if you find this too complicated, you don't have to worry because no doubt whatever game you're trying to run will receive some kind of backport available for it eventually, probably very soon, especially if it's a popular game. So likely you can just wait until there is a version available that has a backport already built in, and then you can just run the uh, backport payload to get that game running on your older firmware. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.